everybody, and welcome to Biblical Financial Freedom! Hallelujah! Hey, come on in, come on in, come on in, join in with us. Hey, uh, listen, today we're going to be talking about uh, God's covenant of increase. We're going to start a new lesson today, and uh, make sure you have a, a pen and some paper. But the main thing is, look, have the great textbook, the Bible. That's the main thing. But this is going to be fun. This is where we come to find out what God has to say to you and I concerning our money. Hallelujah. And today we're going to learn about God's covenant of increase. Glory be to God. All right. So let's pray. Let's make our daily confession and let's get in this word. I hope you are as, as excited and expecting to receive as much as I am. Amen. If you, if you where I'm at, this is going to be super fun. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we just want to thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the privilege. And Lord, I count it a privilege and an honor to share your word with your people. I thank you, Father, you give us ears to hear. And I thank you, Father, we won't be just hearers of the word of God, but doers. And I just thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. Father, and right now, in Jesus' name, we just bind every outer word. Every corrupt communication, every false accusation, every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver that the devil would try to bring against us to hinder the word of God and and, and the cause and and, and and to try to stop the promises of God from coming to pass in our lives. For we declare, we decree in Jesus' name, none of these things shall happen. Nothing that the devil throws at us shall come to pass and be manifested in our lives. But Father, we just release the peace of God, the joy of God, revelation knowledge of God, the healing, the provision of God to come to pass and be manifested in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen and amen. All right, hallelujah. Let's get your Bibles. Come on, you there, get your Bible. I don't know if some of you might have a tablet or a phone, but praise the Lord, I still like turning the pages of the Bible. Everybody should have a Bible they can write in. Amen. Because uh, this is more valuable than any treasure on the earth. The word of God. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's get your Bibles up. Put them in the air. Even wave them like you really care. Woo, woo, woo. Glory. And let's make this confession together. You guys ready? Here we go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, man, he's kind of radical and wild today. Yes, I am. I just love making that confession and letting the devil know that this word will work in my life. Okay, so we're starting a new lesson here, and we're talking about God's covenant of increase. God's covenant of increase increase. Remember what we told you about what a covenant is in, in the Bible or, or the Westford Dictionary said a covenant is a mutual agreement, a mutual agreement between two or more persons. See, it's a mutual agreement. An agreement between God, see, it's an agreement. A covenant is agreement between God and his people in which God makes certain promises. See, listen to what I'm saying. There's a covenant, an agreement, God between God, you and just say between you and God, you, God and I, and, and God makes certain promises. See, he makes the promises, but because, but look, look what it says, but requires certain behavior from them in return. See, God makes the promises, but it takes, and God requires certain, uh, certain uh, behavior from you and I in return. All right, I just want to make that. So now we're going to talk about God's covenant of increase. See, this is an agreement. If we do, he makes the promises. We just do what he says to do. 
Glory be to God. I'm loving this already. Okay, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Talking about God's, God's. Somebody say it with me. Say God's. God's covenant of increase. See, the world have a way of doing things, but God has a whole different way. God has a whole different way. And don't get nervous. Don't you get nervous. Don't you get shaken by these things that happen around you, banks failing and all of that. The kingdom never is going to fail. Kingdom of God is never going to fail. That's why you and I, we have to be tuned in to the word of God. If we would stick with this Bible. See, I tell Christian people, why are you troubled? God already told us these things are going to happen. But if we stick with God, he's not going to fail. Amen. So let's, let's look at uh, uh, Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3. And I'm going to read that in the King James and also in the Amplified Classic. Okay, Genesis chapter 12. Here we go. Let's read it. Genesis 12, uh, 1 and 3 it says, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, who's talking? God. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindreds, kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee who's going to do this God is going to do this and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shall be a blessing what did he say? You shouldn't be a burden. You should be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Okay. Now I want to read this in the Amplified. In the Amplified Classic. Okay. It says this. Now in Heron, the Lord said to Abram, Go for yourself, for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I'm going to stop here for a minute. Now listen, God is going to give you and I certain instructions, where he want us at and the assignment that he's given us. Why is this important? Some of you, you trying to fit in and, and, and instead of seeking God, you trying to push your way down in a certain career and all that. You need to ask God, is that what you called me to do? Is this the assignment you have for my life? See, you and I as Christian people, we're not chasing stuff like the world. We want to be in our assignment. God, what have you assigned me to do? Is it to preach the gospel? Is it to work at McDonald's? Is it to work over here at Burger King? Or is it to work for a factory? I don't know where, I'm, where you're watching this from. Some of you might not have Burger King and McDonald's. I don't know. But wh where, where is it you want me to be? What is my assignment? Because as long as you're in the place that God wants you to be at, you're going to be blessed. Okay, I just want to lay that down. See, he told Abraham, I'm going to take you away. Let's go back over here in the Amplified, verse 1 again. He says, look at this. It says, now in Heron, the Lord said to Abram, go for yourself, for your own advantage, away from your country and, your, and from your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. See, God have a place for you and I. And in verse 2, he says, and I will make of you a great nation. Who is going to do this? God, see, God's telling him, if you do this, Abraham, you obey me. Remember, we said the covenant. God makes the promise. He gives you and I certain requirements to make, to keep. He says, I will make of you a great nation. This is the promise. But you see what he's, he already, he already told Abraham what he's requiring of him. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. Who's going to do it? God's going to do it. I will bless you with abundance. I love this. How it says in the Amplified with abundant increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguished and you will be a blessing. What is that? A bless. Dispensing good to others. See, when you become a blessing, you start to bless others. And he says, and I will bless those who bless you, who confer. 
See, those who bless you, who confer prosperity or happiness upon you. And curse him who curses or uses insolent language towards you. And you will all the families and kindreds of the earth be blessed. And by you, they will bless themselves. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. That just, just reading that gets you excited. Get you all wound up and say, man, say that's, I don't know why people wouldn't want to serve God. God, God, think of that. God, the creator of the heaven and the earth. If you would do what he says, he said, I'm going to bless you. Ooh, and he said, and Abraham, this will come on you and all your seed. If you don't know, you and I, we are the seed of Abraham. See, this is a covenant. It's a promise of increase. God, see, if you serve in the Lord, all you can do is increase. If you're doing what he tells you to do, your life is going to keep increasing. Why? Because God wants you to be a blessing of others. It's a covenant. It's already an agreement that God has made with you and I. See, he said, I bring up about the promise, but I need you to do what I tell you to do. The Abrahamic, we call this the Abrahamic covenant, is a covenant of increase. See, that covenant is a covenant of increase. You read in there, you can't see. Woo. Thank you, Father. I know, I believe I'm healed by Jesus Christ. You can't see nothing but increase in that promise and that's a covenant to fail to increase is to violate the articles of the covenant do you see that see if you and I don't increase we fail in the articles see a covenant we got to keep in line with the articles of the covenant and the covenant said, Abraham, if you leave your kindreds and your relatives and, and then go into the land where I show you, he said, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you with abundance, increase of favors, and make your name favors, distinguished, and you will be a blessing. And then he goes down, down there in verse 3, and he says, uh, this is in the King James, whoever bless you will be blessed, and whoever curse you will be blessed, and thee and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. See, God, this is a promise God made to Abraham and even unto his seed. Amen. Now, let's go over to Deuteronomy. Boy, this is good. I just want to let this sink in on you. I, I don't know why people fight against the prosperity of God and the blessings of God. It's not us doing it. So I'm trying to help you. It's not you doing it. All you're doing is being obedient to God. God is the one that causes the increase. God is the one that causes you and I to be blessed. So I want to ask you, how can people stop that? No matter what they come up with to try to stop it, no matter how they keep attacking the church or the Christians and the believers, you can't stop the blessings of God. Why? Because you ain't big enough to fight with God. You are not big enough to take down God. These are not my promises. They are God's promises, church. Come on, brothers and sisters. Just get in line with it. People struggling out here. One of the reasons, see, there's no reason for church people to be struggling and not having their knees met if we walk in the obedience of the covenants of God. Now, there may be circumstances that come up. There may be some tough times that come up. But the Bible says many are the affliction of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. All we have to do is just keep sticking with God, keep confessing his word, keep holding on to his promises. If you do what you supposed to do I guarantee you God is going to do what he do and if you're going through a test some people like to say well I'm, I'm like Job I'm going through Job well he got double for his trouble and he didn't stay in it all the rest of his life it was only nine months so if you're going through it and you think you're like Job you should be expecting double for your trouble all right hallelujah see no matter what you're still going to come out on the other side more blessed because that's the way God worked. If, if you follow the pattern of the Bible and the word of God, it's not you and I. It's God that's causing the blessing on us. That's why we can have the joy. We can have joy in the midst of a trial. I See, it's the joy of the Lord is our strength. God joys our strength. 
But what happens, you get focused on other things. The Bible says, keep your eyes, set your eyes and your affection on things above. See, we're not staying here forever, church. But while we're here, God's going to bless us to do what we need to do. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. Go, go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we're going to go through verses 1 through 3. Deuteronomy. Look at these. Man. I'm telling you, this is good. Somebody said to me one day, a couple of days, they said, a lot of the stuff you read is the Old Testament. See, I, I, sometimes I don't even like saying the Old Testament. It's a, like it's an old will. It's the first covenant. The Old Testament is the first covenant. The, the New Testament is the new covenant. But you don't get rid of the old covenant. The new just happened to be better. It just gave us some better promises and stuff. But I'm not going to throw out the old covenant because God is still God. If I do what it says is in there, he's still going to bless me. Oh, hallelujah. But see, people don't understand covenant. Especially in the Western world where, where I'm at. A lot of people don't understand covenant. You think they do, but to be honest, the majority of Christian people do not understand covenant. How do I know that? Because the majority of Christian people you talk to, they don't like to talk about prosperity. They don't want to, oh, it's about money and all of that. Somebody asked me the other day, a couple weeks ago, they said, well, you know, I, I, I used to go to church, but they always talk about money and all that. I said, really? We, and we don't always talk about money. We try to tell you how to get God involved in your money and to bless you and do all of that. So God tapped me, the Spirit of the Lord said, ask him, ask her, has she ever been to Walmart? And the Lord said, I said, hey, have you ever been to Walmart? And there's no put down on Walmart. And the Lord said, yeah, ask her, when's the last time she'd been to her favorite place to go shopping? And I said, where's her favorite place? When's the last time you've been there? I said, I have a question for you. When's the last time you went to Walmart, got a, a carton of food or, or things of clothing, whatever you purchase, a cart of stuff, and you walked out the door and didn't have to pay? She said, well, I could never do that. I said, well, see, they always asking for your money. When you go shopping, people are always asking for your money. When you go down them food aisles and you go to your favorite clothing store, fishing shop, market or whatever, what do they want? They want your money. Then why don't you get upset at them? Why do you don't get upset with the man with the candy shop? But when it comes to God, people get upset when preachers talk about money. But there's not a retail store in the world that don't want your money. They even put certain music on to make you feel good in there so you will spend your money. Honey. But we're not trying to get you to spend your money. We're trying to get you to learn how to invest it the way God said to give you something back. See, God's trying to give to you. They trying to take from you. But you will blame the blame it on the preachers. See, they put all the candy, whatever you want, the clothes and stuff. Why? Because they want your money. You come to church, we want to teach you about the covenant of God on increase. Why? Because we want you to see God wants to give you something. He wants to increase you. But you get mad. But how are you going to learn it if we don't teach it? How are you going to get faith if we don't teach it? See, you will never have the ability to believe God for what you don't have faith for. And how do faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why it's my job, and I believe it's every preacher in the world's job, to get you to believe for the impossible. Why? Because if I can't get you to believe for the impossible, then you think you still have the ability to do, but God wants you to believe when you can't do it, but only he can do it. All right. See, when you stay on the level, when I preach on the level for you to do that, you can do it. You don't need God. But when I teach and preach in a place where it causes you to believe for the impossible, there's no way. Only way this is going to happen is God. Now we getting somewhere because I got to get you to know, see who we keep telling you is God that brings the increase. It's a covenant. You got to get out of yourself and look to God. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Okay, let, let's go. Let's go. Let's keep moving. Keep this bus moving. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. And look at verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read it from the King James and the, and the Amplified. Are you guys ready? It says, Now these are the commandments 
the statutes and the judgments, judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land where ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statue and, and his commandments, which I command thee, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thou days may be prolonged. Then he said, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. See, he said, You got to have ears to hear it and to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase. Do what? See, underline that. It may be well. What? But it says you have to do this. You have to hear. You have to hear. See, faith comes by her. You're going to have to hear, O Israel, and then what? Observe to do. See, a lot of people hear it, but they don't want to do it. He said, you have to hear and observe to do it. That what? That it may be well with thee, and that thou may increase mightily. See, if you do this, God said you're going to increase mightily. It's a covenant. If you do what you're supposed to do, it's the God's covenant of increase. That thee, thou may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Glory be to God. And church, we have better promises today. But this is one to get you started. Okay, let's look at this in the Amplified. Put on your seatbelt. Buckle up. Buckle up, because you at home, you might, they're going to say, what is he doing? You might be on your job taking a break watching this, and you're going to go running around. They're going to say, what's going on? Woo, the word of the Lord came in. Now, look at this in uh, Deuteronomy. I get on the right page, 6, and look at this in the Amplified. Oh, the Amplified Classic. Now, this is the instruction. See, God said, I'm going to give you the instruction. This is the instruction the laws and the precepts which the Lord your God commanded me to teach you that you might do them in the land in the land to which you go to possess it. See, wherever you at, wherever God, this still works for you today that you may reverently fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son and keep all his statue and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. See, we got to get back to people need to get back to the reverence and the fear of God. See, we live in a society where people think they can just do whatever they want. I'm going to tell you right now, that is stinky thinking. That is bad thinking. I think it was Zig Ziglar used to say, you need a checkup from the neck up. And this, that's, that's, I'm telling you, this, this, is, this, this crazy thinking is all penetrated all through the church. People think they can do what they want, say what they want, and God will just forgive me. Boy, that's, that's bad thinking. You got to have a reverence and an honor and a respect for the word of God. Not just what you pick and choose, all of it. All of it. See, it's amazing how many people walk in unforgiveness and they think the promises of God's going to come on them. No, you look, look, church, we don't, we, we walk in forgiveness. We walk in love. That's what everything we do. You have to be motivated by love. I tell people there's nothing you can do to stop me from loving you. Why? Because that's what God told me to do. I'm not going to hell over nobody. I'm going to love people because that's what God told me to do. You say, oh, how do you get there? You got to keep working on it. You just, it's a choice. It's a choice. Every day I choose to walk in love. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Okay, let's move on. Look at verse three. He says, hear it therefore. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm healed in Jesus' name. It says in verse three, hear it therefore, O Israel. And then what he says, and be watchful to do them. See, you got to hear this word and do them that it may be well with you and that you may look at this. I love this. And that you may increase exceedingly. Do what? Increase exceedingly as the Lord, the God of your fathers has did what? Has promised you. He did what? He promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. God has a land of milk and honey for you too. What is it? 
the promises of God. All the promises of God are yes and amen. But you're going to have to observe it. You're going to have to listen, and you're going to have to do what he's telling you to do. And like I said earlier, see, if you in strife with people, get out of it real quick. Walk in love. Walk in love. Don't let, don't let the devil trap you from holding or keeping back the blessings of God. There's, so it's sin. It's so many. I don't know why Christian people think they can go out and just sin and then the blessings of God are still going to come on them. Come on, church. I don't know where we get this thinking. Well, I know where we get it. It's mis misteaching, misunderstanding. God did not bless sin. You got to be like God. You got to hate sin and everything about it just like God. But I want you to know today, we just getting started in this lesson on God's covenant of increase. But I want you to understand and know that God wants you blessed. Okay, look, we are we running out of time. We're going to have to pick this up back up next week. But I want you to share it with some friends and family and know for sure that God wants to increase you. Okay, we're just getting that foundation. If it's nothing else, I want you to get that in you, that God has a covenant. It's a covenant. You do your part, God will do his part. He ain't going to break his promise as long as you do what he says, and you're going to increase mightily because that's the promise of God. Now, look, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to pray. Pray and ask God if you're supposed to partner with us. Just pray. That's all I'm asking. Just pray. No, no, no. no. Just pray. And ask God, if you're supposed to partner with us. Now, there's two things you can do in partnering. Partner by praying for us daily. We'll be praying for you. And also, if God wants you to support us financially. Why? We can't do it without you. There's a whole world we want to reach. We can't do it without you. We need your help. I'm going to tell you right now, I can do it, not do it on my own. And God wants you to see if he wants you to partner with us. And whatever he tells you to do, if he tells you to send in a dollar, five dollars, ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a million, just be obedient to what God tells you to do. Amen. All right. Well, look, I love you guys. Y'all be blessed. Have a good week. Don't forget to join us on Sundays. And remember this, okay, that God is exalted. Satan, that no good, low down sap sucker, he is defeated. And Jesus Glory be to God. My Jesus and your Jesus, he is Lord. P-O-H, peace out, homies and homieettes. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye.